have Yeah, I make a motion we defer the uh, item to uh <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yeah, I didn't know I was going to end up in a Verizon commercial tonight. So uh, let's okay let the uh, record reflect that all council members are present and accounted for uh, tonight. Uh, I think I will lead the Pre pledge of allegiance. And um, let's see, the uh, pastor has not arrived yet. Uh, so what we'll do is call on somebody to uh, do the invocation. And um, you know what? Eric's not here tonight, is he? Okay. Well, you know what? Uh, if anybody anybody want to do an invocation tonight? You want to do one tonight? <laughs> this, this is why I'm kind of stretching this out a little bit. <laughs> Well, I, I'll tell you what we can do. It's not the way we would normally do business. We'd always have the invocation first, but we can rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, do that first. And um, and then, uh, yeah, he even gave me a bio. So then if he comes uh, in the first few minutes of uh, the meeting, if we will. We'll, it, yeah, just... well, if not, well, then we'll find a way to make it work out. Please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Not yet. Okay. We're just gonna kind of kind of stretch this out a little bit here. Give them an opportunity to get here. Why don't you tell us about it? I can do that. I can absolutely do that. So uh, when the uh, pastor gets here, uh, Reverend Andre Ramos is the pastor at Guardian Angels Catholic Church in Santee. Reverend Ramos has been a priest for 35 years and a pastor at Guardian Angels for the past six years. Reverend Ramos earned his degree from the University of Santo Tomas, Manila, Philippines. And this is the 61st year of the Guardian Angels in Santee. Uh, before Guardian Angels was built, Santee Catholics had to go to Lakeside or Allied Gardens for Mass. Mass in Santee was first held in a Quonset hut on Cuyamaca Street by a visiting priest from St. Therese in Allied Gardens. And so that's what I have for him, and he still isn't here yet. That's all right, though. Mr. Mayor, would you like to do the library presentation, and perhaps he'll arrive at that point? Let's do that. Sounds good. the mic here okay it's working thank you perfect <laughs> thank you what a great night to present to city council you guys are very unintimidating right now i just have to say we can change that <laughs> okay okay i'll be serious so good evening mayor vice mayor and city council thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak tonight 
My name is Liz Vagani, and I am the branch manager at your Santee Branch San Diego County Library. You may have seen my name on some of the monthly sit library reports that we send in, but I'm really excited to be here in person tonight. We're just going to spend a few very quick minutes providing a brief overview of the library's mission and the services that we offer here in Santee. So the decisions that we make on how to offer services are based on the library's mission statement and our four guiding principles that you can see here in front of you. Using this framework and an extensive process of data analysis and community feedback, the library staff provide expertly curated programs for the residents of Santee. So the first county library in Santee was a lending collection established on just a few shelves of Greenleaf's ice cream parlor in 1915. So in the subsequent 108 years, our presence and services have grown significantly. It has been our great privilege to offer the residents of Santee unparalleled access to books, technology, and lifelong learning. So what you see in front of you is a brief overview of the many ways that Santee residents utilized our library services in fiscal year 22-23. We've got over 25,500 cardholders here in Santee. We've had 200 programs with over 11,000 attendees, 112,000 visits to the library with 402,000 items checked out. Almost 300,000 of those were physical items, but some of those were digital as well. And 17,000 total internet sessions were initiated. So we promote learning and exploration and discovery and fulfillment for personal growth. The library really serves as a hub of learning for all ages of Santee residents. We cultivate school readiness through twice weekly early literacy enhanced story times. We do outreach story times, including filming those for Santee TV. And we also offer monthly early learning workshops that we teach to incarcerated mothers at Las Colinas to help them understand how to work with their children when they're reunited to get reading skills early on. As of 2021, there were 1,200 households in Santee that did not have a broadband internet subscription. Um, the libraries really work to address this issue by facilitating technology access both at home and in the branch. This includes in-branch services such as free Wi-Fi, tech help sessions, et cetera. And actually in the past year, we have also checked out 317 Chromebook and MiFi hotspot kits, including a year of free internet service to people in the community. They can bring those home and use those for a year. And also, we offer just a wide variety of continued lifelong learning for all ages. We also champion civic engagement and support individuals in shaping the future of their community. We really believe that all individuals should have access to their government at all levels. That's very important. So in partnership with the Registrar of Voters, all SDCL locations are now ballot drop locations. What that means for Santee is that in the November 2022 midterm election, 51% of all ballots that were returned via ballot drop were dropped in our library branch, which was 4,525 ballots to be exact. Um, and in order to facilitate open government, we really love that. So we post all of the municipal documents, including city council documents. We print those out for people to read and have access to. We also have collections of environmental impact reports. And if you're ever looking for information on Camp Elliott, we are a local repository for the Army Corps of Engineers. So they keep all of our stuff updated for us. And we partner with the wonderful city of Santee and their staff to provide all sorts of different programs, presence at outreach events, and programs all summer long and all year long in partnership with the city. We love to read. It's our thing. We're librarians. What can I say? We encourage reading in every way to develop skills, to build hope, to nurture a love of reading. Um, using their library cards, our customers have free and instant access to millions of books, physical and digital. And outside of our own walls, library staff engage in a lot of literacy-oriented outreach in the community. We do class visits for class visits for local students. We have book clubs at LCDRF and at Lantern Crest Senior Living Facility. And we do story times for adults over in Edgemore who can't leave their facility, so we go there and read story time for them. We just did one on the eclipse, and they loved it. We did eclipse classes. It was really great. Um, and of course, for folks where those millions of books seem intimidating, um, you're in luck, because we have expert staff who are ready to help people navigate through that. Our final guiding principle encourages creativity as both a participant and a creator. We have a lot of programs each month for children, teens, and adults to engage in the arts. These range from musical concerts to resin art to watercolor painting classes. 
Um, in addition to these library curated events, SDCL offers admission for free to a lot of local popular attractions through our new Discover and Go program, which includes things like free tickets to the San Diego Zoo and SDSU athletic events. So we try to make that open for all community members to be able to get a hold of those services and enjoy their creative lives. So before wrapping up, I would like to mention the Friends of the Santee Library, whose diligent work funds many of the excellent programs we talked about tonight. And then also to learn more about the Friends of the Library, you can visit the Friendly Use Bookstore, which is right next to the library. Um, for anybody who might be watching at home, because I'm a big fan of Santee TV, um, learn more about our events and services. It's always available at sdcl.org. And thank you for your time. Please let me know if you have any questions tonight. Do you rent costumes? Sadly, no, but we do have... Sorry, guys. We do have Halloween PJ story time. That, that sounds like... <laughs> You said it's geared PJ? towards children, but of course. <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you all for your time this evening. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right, we're going to uh, rise and have uh, Dustin Trotter do the invocation for tonight. Thank you, Dustin. Oh, microphone turned up. Lord, we'll take a moment to recognize your presence with us tonight. And tonight here at the City Council, we pray for your wisdom, guidance, and reverence tonight, but really heavy-hearted with the war going on in Israel. We pray that these terrorists get, get rid of out of our world and really make a peace in, in the Middle East. This is something that's, that's weighed very heavy on me for the last couple of weeks, and I really hope that our country, our civility, our people, and our independence for this country shows light and takes precedence over the rest of the world. In God's name we pray, amen. Thank you. We'll keep it simple. <laughs> All right, that takes us to the calendar. Are there any items to be... Added, deleted, or reordered? <laughs> Council member? No. Uh, uh, or should I say Dr. Hall? <laughs> <laughs> None for me. No, sir. Anything? No, sir. City manager? No, sir. City attorney? No, mayor. Yes, sir. I have a speaker on item one and two. One and two. Okay. Let's go to item number one then, which is the approval of reading by title only and waiver of reading in full. Are we approving the consent calendar first? Oh, well, there's kind of got ahead of me there when you said on items one and two. So um, motion, okay. motion to approve the consent. Second. Uh, item number three on the consent calendar. Okay, please vote. Motion carries unanimously. All right, now let's go to item number one then. Approval of reading by title only and waiver of reading in full or of ordinances and resolutions on the agenda. Truth. This is truth ready to disrupt the status quo better than Joel Anderson and bring the civic engagement Liz just mentioned. I remain against passing resolutions and ordinances by title alone. I am also against deceptive titles as well as unnecessary resolutions and ordinances. And on another flip side, I am pro reading titles before an item is spoken about. I actually would like to see each word and each resolu resolution and each ordinance be read aloud. And specifically, I would like to see John read each item. It'd be fun to hear him complain a lot while living in San Diego. Or how about opposing this item one so you can read item four in its entirety? Let's see if you've got speaking endurance like me. I think we could even have a presentation on this item highlighting things like cost-benefit analysis or time-benefit analysis. We could really deep dive and provide tons of information about it, kind of like reading the contents of an item rather than just the title of an item before it passes. More information is always better. Some may say TMI, but I say FYI. Thank you. Motion to approve. Second. Motion second, please vote. 
Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. That takes uh, item number two, approval of payment of demands as presented. Truth. Okay, let's see. $15,480 to ICF Jones and Stokes for the Multiple Species Conservation Plan. MSCP, it's so easy to say. I can say it. I know people struggle just to say that word. Uh, let's see, either for mountain lions to kill our pets or butterflies to fly away off the land, taken away from humans. But which one's more expensive for a city, I think is the question. Is it consulting or is it lawsuits from the state? Because that's what that's really about. $18,000 to jet advertising for the new city website. There's that down payment, I believe it was. 5625 to Pat Davis Design Group, and I'm assuming that's the graphic art for the city website. That's a company based in Sacramento. And $960 to RASA for a map check of the future Popeye's chicken. I like to mention food. $24,871 to SDES. I don't know what that is. For the replacement of the town center trolley square clock tower panel. I don't know if I saw that. The screen rental and DJ services for movies in the park cost $1,675. And what's great is I, I think I know how Marlene found 6,000 sandbags. We've got a charge of $6,436 to Cornerstone Aggregates, Inc. for sandbags. And, you know, I told you, next time, save money. Just scrap sandbag, one gigantic sandbag we could use. Thank you. Second. A motion second. Please vote. Motion carries unanimously. No and further speaker, sir. Thank you. And that takes us to non-agenda public comment. Speaker slips. We just have one speaker. Truth. All right. By now, I'm sure some people are probably thinking that I've been inviting or paying people to come here and say nice things about me, but that's definitely not true. In fact, I never told anyone that I speak at this city council. That's how private I actually am. Regardless, I'm really grateful for the good people who said nice things here and support me, and they just get it on multiple levels, and are up there, they're fighting the same fight even with different beliefs and ideas about solutions. And I just want to let people in on my day yesterday because it was a book's worth of living. At the County Board of Supervisors, I gave 10 speeches. Uh, that means I spoke for about 20 minutes, and I was not the only speaker there. So not just at that nine-hour meeting, but to give an insight, I spoke about gangs, jail, politicking, MTS, BMX bikes, automatic license plate reader software and camera maker flock having a monopoly on the country's privacy, political theater, Prop 13, Slurpees, disrespectful county workers and nice county workers, the dangers of constitutional conventions, homeless encampments, and San Diego's failures around it, Israel's use of white phosphorus bombs since 2009, speaking different languages, the gun reduction agenda, illegal immigrants being given Americans money, sheriffs that don't follow the law, and so much more. With unbelievable backstories that I cannot say here, I have to get my own microphone for that. And maybe I will. I talked to all kinds of people from every political spectrum and perspective and agenda. So I have a related thought challenge. What makes America a country? <coughs> every single person in this country is different and unique. I've even been called very different, and I don't disagree. But because we're all so different, what holds us together? So many have different religions, different lifestyles, different accents, different languages, different food, and different beliefs. So what unifies us, if anything? The answer is actually very simple. It's freedom. The freedom to be how you want to be and to live your life the way you want to live it, as long as you're not encroaching upon another's rights. It's very simple. So it's no wonder that there is the least amount of unity we've ever seen in this country. We've lost more and more freedom every year for at least the last 90 years. But the mindset solution is also simple. Thinking about what it is that unifies us, accepting that as the foundation of our country, and then defending it until the bitter end for every single fellow American, no matter what the differences in beliefs are. I would like people to consider that and not be so quick to judge people or throw people away. And lastly, I have a fun idea, totally different. At city-sponsored events, I think the city should set up a booth to explain to people what a city council is, who's on it, why it's important, where City Hall is at, and how they can come speak. Wouldn't that be fun? 
Also, I would like uh, the picture in picture to be brought back because I want to remember Laura's beautiful smile. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. All right. No for the speakers. That takes us to item number four, which is a public hearing for conditional use permit P2022-10 and mitigated negative declaration AEIS2022-11 for the auto center with two dealership buildings, a detailed building, a body shop, an automatic car wash, and related site improvements. On 13.1 acre site located at 10335 Mission Gorge Road in the general commercial zone. Michael. Uh, good evening, Honorable Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of the Council. The item before you tonight is a request for a conditional use permit proposing an auto center on a 13.1 acre vacant site at 10335 Mission Gorge Road in the general commercial zone. The project location, as highlighted in this aerial image before you, is the southwest corner of Mission Gorge Road and Cottonwood Avenue. The site also has frontage along Railroad Avenue. The site is immediately surrounded by automotive uses to the north, an apartment building and single family homes to the east, single family homes and a mobile home park to the south, and uh, multifamily development to the west. The site itself is in the general commercial zone as mentioned and the surrounding uses are uh, in the general commercial zone, multifamily residential zones, R2 zone uh, and general commercial zone. Here's an uh, aerial view of the site. This is looking uh, south, uh, southeast toward the site. Uh, this is a photograph um, from Mission Gorge Road from the eastern uh, most end of, of the site looking south onto the site for Mission Gorge Road. And then this is also looking south onto the site. This is the westernmost portion near Cottonwood Avenue. And this is an, uh, an eastern view of the site from Cottonwood Avenue and Happy Lane. And this is a view from the frontage along Railroad Avenue. This is looking north onto the site. Uh, this is the uh, proposed site plan, landscape plan. The development would consist of five buildings with associated parking, drive aisles, utility improvements, trash enclosures, and landscaping. The project would include six driveways, as depicted by these arrows, um, into the site, two on Cottonwood Avenue, three on Mission Gorge Road, and one on Railroad. Proposed uh, public improvements include sidewalks and fully uh, landscaped parkways um, along the frontage of Mission Gorge Road, uh, Cottonwood Avenue and Railroad Avenue. Uh, six to eight uh, foot high masonry walls would be provided along the perimeter of the site. Uh, the eight foot wall would be provided specifically on the eastern boundary of the site adjacent to the apartment building that is near, near the site. The total parking field consists of 688 spaces uh, specific to the dealerships, there'd be um, 94 spaces for display, 305 spaces for inventory, and 81 uh, customer spaces. This is the uh, site plan overlaid um, over the aerial to show how the site relates to the surrounding area. Uh, the developer is proposing to align um, the easternmost driveway along Mission Gorge Road with Edgemore Drive, which is a signalized intersection. The um, proposed buildings, um, I'll, I'll go through them um, building by building, um, but this is an inset for the, the first proposed dealership. So this particular rendering um, is showing the uh, first dealership, the proposed Chevy dealership on the western end of the project site uh, with the dealership building of approximately 30. 4,000 square feet. This uh, second rendering that'll come up is of the proposed uh, second dealership as is planned, um, which is about 33,000 square feet in size. This is in the near, near the middle of the property. Uh, the proposed 
um, auto body shop um, is about 16,400 square feet, and that's on the uh, eastern end of the of the property along Railroad Avenue. I'm, I'm sorry, Mike. Go, go to which, whose property is that behind with all the rocks and the Stonehenge there, basically? What's going on with that? Is that Michael Grant's property or is that their property? I'm not sure who that, the ownership that would belong for that to. Um, Daryl Priest. Okay. And then um, this final rendering shows the car wash, which is complementary to the auto dealerships as most of the, as all of the autos will be washed at this car wash. It will be open to the public as well. And here's a comprehensive view of the entire development looking uh, southeast onto the site. Um, we did work closely with uh, the applicant's development team on high quality design of the buildings and also the landscaping. Uh, we drew some of our inspiration from um, kind of high end dealerships like this um, inset shown before you that kind of mimics the proposed landscaping. A uh, mitigated negative declaration has been prepared for this project with a uh, mitigation monitoring and reporting program, which are attached to the staff report. We received two comments, um, two comment letters for which responses have been prepared, and those are also before you. Uh, at this time, staff would recommend that you conduct and close the public hearing. You adopt the mitigated negative declaration and approve the project by adopting the resolutions before you. Uh, this concludes staff presentation. The applicant is present tonight to uh, speak on behalf of the project as well. Thank you. Speaker slips? Uh, yes, sir. I believe that's who I have speakers for. Uh, Manny Sedano. Actually, uh, Jim Moxham. I'll go first. Okay. Jim, Jim Moxham is the other speaker. Okay. Those are the only two speaker slips? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, good evening and... and what a joy to be here and to see that I can be flown anywhere uh, with the vice mayor and maybe out into space with the mayor. Uh, but certainly uh, it's exciting to be in this kind of community where you can do that and do that well. Uh, Honorable Mayor Minto, Vice Mayor Caval, council members. Um, my name is Jim Moxham, Ted 580 Prospect Avenue, Santee. And I'm here tonight on behalf of Cameron Brothers Company headquartered in Santee and founded 76 years ago to ask for your support of this well-conceived comprehensive auto center the staff has presented to you tonight. You know that the site has been in escrow multiple times with multiple buyers, all who walked away from it. And Cameron Brothers stepped up and acquired the site approximately four years ago, believing in its potential and our ability to deliver a first quality project to the city of Santee. Santee Auto Center is the result of our investment in time, expertise, and capital. We are especially pleased with the quality and comprehensive nature of the project that Manny Sedano has created on the 13 acre site that provides the needed facilities co-located on one site. The Santee Auto Center has two dealership opportunities, each selling a projected 2,000 new and used cars annually. There are service facilities that will accommodate 130 customers per day per dealer. If your car is damaged, there is a separate auto body shop to complete the repairs on site. And because everyone that buys a car, services their car, or picks up their car at the case and auto body shop, have one thing in common. We all expect to pick up a clean car. And these cars will be washed at the on-site public car wash, everything being on site. This comprehensive plan creates synergy and eliminates duplicative facilities at each dealership. The benefit of not having a car wash tunnel at each dealership affords the opportunity to have a more efficient site allowing the better use of the site for displaying vehicles and ultimately selling more vehicles. If not mistaken, this will be Santee's first and only new car dealership. 
This site will be a powerhouse and an excellent revenue generator. Mr. Sedano will follow me and share his thoughts and visions for the Santee Auto Center. But before introducing Mandy Sedano, I would like to first thank staff. There's more behind it. The rest of the staff for your hard work in working through the entitlement process over the last 12 months. With our team of consultants left by Kevin Perry, principal of HED Architecture. Our consulting team are here in attendance tonight should they be needed to answer any of your questions. Thank you. Uh, may I just carry on for another minute? No. Sorry. Three minutes are up. No, we can't do that. Got your three minutes. Have Manny come up. Sorry, Jim. Pick up on. Good evening. Uh, I want to express how excited I am personally that after more than six years, uh, we've been pitching and planning this uh, project to come and bring Chevrolet to the city of Santee. Uh, since 2017, I've been working on this project and convincing the Detroit team at Chevrolet that Santee would make an excellent dealership location. Driving them through the city, viewing the Costco, um, the town center, the proximity of the school site, finally obtaining approval from, Chev from Chevrolet for the Santee location it is a perfect site that allows us the ability to build a comprehensive auto center incorporating car dealerships for retail and commercial business, a major collision center, and a car wash all on one property. The opportunity to be the first in building a fully fledged functional new car dealership here is also very exciting. And um, the people in Santee and East County need more options closer to home. I believe in that. We have a tight uh, timeline, and we would appreciate the city's full cooperation in helping us meet our deadline of being operational in late 2024. And um, just to finish Jim's last um, paragraph here, since Mr. Sedano needs to be operational by the end of next year, there's a lot of work to get the site ready to deliver to him so he can start building construction. We would request that without eliminating any conditions of approval, that flexibility be granted to staff in meeting the conditions of approval in a matter that allows sequencing uh, the construction in the most expedient manner. This will help us get the project out of the ground, operational in the, in the shortest time frame. And that's, that's all. Great, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Ron? Well, uh, the mayor and I met with Jim, and I do have a, and we were concerned about the car wash. Uh, do you have a minute to ask, to go over that? Jim, I guess, or Mike, can you pull up the? Question uh, for Anybody wants to deal with the car wash part of it? Uh, can you pull up, I think it's slide six or something. About right there. Okay. My, my big concern is how many cars will be in that queue to go around? Um, well, I just, I, I keep run, worrying about cars lining up on the street. Are we going to have a problem with that? The, uh, the queue can accommodate up to 12 right before the pavement bay. And then the tunnel itself can accommodate up to six vehicles. I guess we're time. about 18 vehicles. That's probably okay then. I just worry about them being on Mission Gorge and, you know, the traffic coming at 50 miles an hour. And uh, if it is a problem, would they consider shutting it down for until we get the cars out of there? That would be my only concern with it. Um, also read about the rock crushing, um, and I'm not sure if you can handle that. How long is that going to last? Because I, I would not want to be hearing that all day long for seven months. Yeah, I think that may be a, a better question for Jim regarding the rock crushing operation. We believe that the rock crushing will take two to three months to first break down the larger size to break it into two by pieces that could be hauled off potentially okay. or can be grounded into base 
and reused on the site underneath the parking lots. Whatever gets it done quicker, because that's my concern. Is I'm you know I'm, I'm, phone calls will be coming as far as I'm pretty much sure on that one. So whatever gets, uh, I know that the uh, landfill does rock crushing. If you have to send some up there, it, it's know. it's in our interest to get it done as quickly as we can. Okay, and, and we will work with you to do that. Uh, pretty much that was it. You know, then that looks good. Yeah, well, the site's been vacant for quite some time, and um, I personally am really happy that the Cameron family stepped in to develop the site. I know there was a lot of um, start and stop. <laughs> Jim and I spoke several times before COVID and after COVID, and things changed. Um, but this, this, to me, appears like a, a great use for the site. Of all the things that could go there, um, you know, it's, it's operational during the daytime, so probably more friendly for the neighborhood. Um, and you're right, we don't have, it'll be the first ever uh, new car sales. Uh, I met with also the team uh, last week, and we, we went through their business model, and I was really impressed by the team that um, they put together for this operation. I like that they're selling commercial vehicles at their site. Um, I like the fact that there's a car wash there. I, I do expect my car to be clean either after I buy it or service it. Or um, you know, it's a, it's an added benefit to have one in the in the area. But I know that there's other car washes around. I don't I don't think their biggest user is going to be outside. It probably be inside the dealership itself with that that many cars, um, and. You know, CNT believes in keeping our cars. Um, we're not going to force everybody on the trolley, so we definitely welcome you to CNT. And I make a motion to approve staff recommendation. Thank you. Any questions or comments, Rob? I'll just echo the applicant's request that we staff does everything they possibly can to make sure that this moves along. I uh, don't like getting phone calls of delays, uh, changes, last minute added added items after the fact so if you're I appreciate the city manager to make sure she stays on top of this this project and gets this uh, gets us going sooner rather than later it's like we have a ton of projects that have been approved over the previous years and still aren't breaking ground I don't want the same thing to happen to this one so thank you mm -hmm. I'll second the motion sorry <laughs> got, nothing, got nothing now um, you know, the only thing I'll say is that, um, you know, I, I looked at this and um, when I saw some of the renderings, uh, I, the only question I had was, um, are we going to put in regular size uh, um, sidewalks? Because if you go down there now, the people have to walk on about two feet of a sidewalk and right up against a fence and it's really not all that safe. And the answer, of course, was yes, these are uh, regular size meandering meandering sidewalks and uh, they're actually quite attractive uh, having just having this whole place cleaned up is such a benefit um, to the uh, community and you know I, I know uh, Manny you own uh, other uh, car dealerships and uh, did some checking I, I haven't found any negative comments you know other than what you know some some people are never happy doesn't matter what you do. Um, so um, I think it's going to be great having you here in town, and um, we want to welcome you to the family. And um, so I have a motion and a second. Please vote. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. And believe it or not, that brings us right back around to... Non agenda public comment. Speaker slips. No speakers, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's go to council reports. Um, Ron? Uh, I'm the, uh, did another enforcement this time in uh, La Mesa on Amaya Street for the MTS uh, trolley. Again, almost similar results to the last one 34% uh, uh, fare evasion rate. Uh, there will be one coming to Santee in the future, and uh, we're working our way down the line and trying to get that up and get uh, MTS people to pay their money. 
Thank you. Laura? No report. Dustin? Just wanted to uh, remind the community that we have our annual rivalry football game coming this uh, Friday here in our community. <laughs> so as it is, just rivalry week. Rob and I did a little of friendly uh, wager, as we usually do. So the, um, the, the winner's team, the opposite person will be up here wearing the opposite uh, colors, you know, come the 11th, or excuse me, what, November 8th meeting, right? Yeah, whatever our next meeting is. So I just want to remind everybody, it's at West Hills High School this uh, week at 7 p.m. Uh, Friday night. So go out there and, and cheer for your, uh, your side of the town. Meaning Santana. <laughs> Who's going to win that game? Santana. 17-14. Oh, I, I just remind everybody what the uh, record is in 33 years of this. Uh, last last year this. was Santana won. Uh, West Hills has a 22 <laughs> to 11 lead on the, in 33 years. So All tides just, must change. <laughs> I say let me dress you. <laughs> oh, no, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. <laughs> uh, is there an over and under on that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, do, do you have anything else? Um, yeah, I uh, want to uh, congratulate everybody on uh, the Brews and Bites uh, event that was that happened on Saturday. Uh, a lot of people had a lot of fun out there. Uh, only two comments, and I'm, I call it negative comments that I got, were one, stop changing the name. People don't know what the heck they're going to any longer. I, if anything, maybe go back to the Bluegrass Beer, Bluegrass Beer and Wine Festival so that people know what it was, what it is, and what it's going to continue to be. So stop changing the name. And number two, make sure the band doesn't stop playing constantly. There was a lot of dead time of music, but other than that, fun time had by all. We actually had really good weather. It stayed nice and cool for us without raining. It was perfect weather. A um, lot of happy people out there, including most all of, uh, all of us, including all of us, yeah. So... Thank you for staff uh, and all the hard work from uh, all the different departments to put that together. You all did a great job. Thank you. I didn't know if you're going to recognize Walter in the crowd tonight, so I thought I'd Walter, you know, say yeah, hi. I, so. Sorry. Walter did an amazing job. Mr. White did an amazing job um, keeping his team moving forward uh, and setting everything up, tearing it all down in the most expeditious manner. So thank you, Mr. White. Uh, John, can I add one thing? Uh, today... Uh, Councilman Trotter, uh, Vice Mayor Koval, and myself uh, attended Ernie Dro Dronenberg's, uh, was awarded, uh, had his name put on our tax collector assessor's office today. So it will now be known as Ernie Dro Drovenberg. I can't say it. Dro Dronenberg. Dronenberg. I know I can say it any other time. Um, but it's, it'll be under his name, and it was a nice ceremony, and... Uh, he has had a long career, 50 years of serving the community, and it was a very nice presentation. So, Thanks. And uh, I don't really don't have a lot either. I just want to talk about the brews and bites also. And, uh, Rob, I did get the same comments about the name. So um, we talked a little bit about that there, uh, Dustin and I. So we're probably going to bring that back at some other point in time. Uh, so, um, Nick, we'll probably get together, chat about that a little bit too. And, uh, but, um, you know, th there were so many people there that had so much fun. It came by, uh, my wife and I, we served. I got to put on a different costume for the night, and uh, it went over really well. And, um, you know, so I just say, you know, that's the second favorite uh, event for me. Uh, obviously, Santee Salutes is the first. And um, so we just keep on keeping on. Santee, well, let me say this. Obviously, we don't mind having fun in Santee. You have council that dresses up. Sorry out there if you didn't get your candy. But that's the way we do things here in Santee. So that's all I have. City Manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. I do want to also add my thanks to staff, the volunteers, and all the council members for coming out to Bruise and Bites. It's really great to see your support of events here in the community, and I know staff appreciates it. And I appreciate all the hours that were put in to make that event happen. Uh, so congratulations to everybody. There are a couple other activities happening here in Santee over the next um, week. On Monday, October 30th, we do have a blood drive. Uh, you know, it's a little ghoulish being around Thanksgiving, uh, pardon me, around Halloween, so a lot of blood. 
but we do a blood drive 9 to 3 o'clock here at City Hall. You do need an appointment in advance. Uh, you can get that by contacting the Red Cross at redcrossblood.org and uh, clicking on the City of Santee event, and you can still come in and you can give blood. So we appreciate you if you want to do that. Again, we also do have, for the second year, I think, in a row, uh, spooky snapshots that's going to be happening here at City Hall in front of this building, the City Council Chambers, on Tuesday of Halloween. Uh, all of you are welcome to come and get your snapshot taken in front of the building. That would be great. And it, it is really designed to go from 1130 to 5 o'clock so that younger children have a chance to come out and enjoy trick-or-treating and being you know, celebrated in their costumes before it gets dark. We do have free photos that you can take in front of a really great backdrop. It kicks off trick-or-treat. The Sheriff's Department has agreed that they will come out uh, from 12 to 3. They're going to have a table with lots of goodies, and you can get your picture taken in costume with a deputy. And then we're working on the fire department, their chief, uh, to make sure that we get a fire engine or some other pub ed booth so you can have a firefighter there as well. So that's on Monday, or pardon me, on Tuesday, the 31st for Halloween. The last item I have for the community is that we are updating our veterans' uh, presentation to honor our veterans here in Santee. We do a veterans photo contest and recognition, if you note, along Mast Boulevard. As well, we have videos that are going to be placed right before Veterans Day. So if you know of anyone who deserves to be recognized for their service or you want to recognize them, please contact our Santee TV team, or you can find them through the city website. Get us a photo so that your favorite veteran can be recognized for their service, and we appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That closes my... Uh, well, pardon me, Mr. Guardian of the Galaxy. That closes out my uh, report for tonight. Star Lord forgives you. <laughs> no report. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Um, we have no closed session, so that means we're getting out of here. It's 17 minutes after 7. Meeting adjourned.